That's right, your boy just scored a new Valorant beta key on Saturday morning, by the way, which was absolutely perfect timing. So you know we had to run some benchmarks, but this isn't like our normal benchmarking videos. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're going to be benchmarking the literal brand new Valorant game with not only some budget graphics cards, but some budget integrated graphics as well. And if you're new here and you want to see other benchmarking videos just like this one, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's check this game out. All right, so we all understand the hype of this new eSport first person shooter, possible CSGO replacement, right? It's been dominating the Twitch views this week. And before you ask, yep, I got the beta key drop just like everyone else by watching countless hours of Twitch live streams. What we, or at least I didn't completely understand, is just how optimized this game is and how it can run on literal potato computers for the most part. Usually in my benchmarking videos I start with the Nvidia cards and work my way up from the 750 Ti to around the 1060 or 1650 and that's what I did for this video, but once I started with the AMD cards and started with the RX 560, I realized that I should probably stop benchmarking these higher budget tier dedicated GPUs and start switching to some more budget hardware like some integrated graphics. The fact is, if you're trying to play Valorant on any dedicated graphics card that's above like $80 in value here in 2020, you're going to be able to run this game perfectly fine in 1080p and achieve 144 FPS. This is the first time one of my benchmarking videos has ever gone through this easy of a game for testing, so I had to step it up a notch and add some super budget integrated graphics as well. I was definitely not prepared for this kind of benchmark, I knew the game ran easily, but I didn't know it was like RX 560 getting 144 FPS in 1440p levels easy. I decided to just throw in some budget hardware that I had down in my studio currently. The first one is the Ryzen 3 3200G, which is a pretty new part, but it's got some very low end Vega 8 graphics. We also got the Athlon 200GE, which is even more lower end, and I'm so glad that I finally found another reason to use this in a video. And I even decided to throw in some Intel integrated graphics as well. The Athlon 200GE is only a two core and four threaded CPU clocked at 3.2 gigahertz running Vega 3 graphics and the Intel CPU that I have was a four core and four threaded i5-3570 which we actually just used in last week's $300 used gaming PC build guide. This is some serious low end hardware when it's not paired with a dedicated graphics card but before we get into our benchmarking numbers let's quickly take a look at our benchmarking rig for the day. Other than the Intel system which like I just said this is just a $300 build but remove the RX 580 out of it this is my old editing test rig which is rocking a Ryzen 7 2700X for the dedicated GPU testing an ASRock X4 70 master SLI motherboard and 16 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator RAM clocked at 3200 megahertz. None of the other parts will really affect our testing today. Now about that 2700X, usually in my benchmarking videos I include like a more moderate Ryzen 5 because that's a more realistic option of what you would pair with these budget graphics cards. But since Valorant is a brand new game and this is completely unknown waters, I wanted to make sure that we didn't have any CPU bottlenecking. With that being said, here's the settings that I use to benchmark every CPU and GPU with the exact same settings. I benchmark them individually as well, we'll get to that afterward, but from now on these settings here at the bottom I'll be calling the extras as I only turn them all on or off for this testing. And without further ado, here's the chart showing the results using 1080p and medium settings. As you can see, the Nvidia card started to show some slight progression until the GTX 1050 Ti messed everything up. Valorant is an incredibly tough game to benchmark right now as all of the maps produce different FPS numbers and I just didn't have the time to ensure I tested every card in the same exact map. If you guys aren't aware, the only way that I could benchmark this game was in the competitive first to 13 round game mode, which just produces some crazy inconsistent numbers. If you see anybody benchmarking numbers using the offline training game modes, please do not trust them because you'll get like literally over 100 more FPS offline compared to online. So yeah, just don't expect super crazy consistent results for this benchmark. After seeing how all of these graphics cards matched up against each other, let's now run through which settings I would personally use for each of these cards and we'll get to the integrated graphics afterwards. I'm going to make this quick, by the way, because once again, yeah, this game is insanely easy to run. First up was the GTX 750 Ti, and in 1080p and medium settings with the extras turned on, I got 159 frames per second. With the GTX 960 in 1080p and high settings and the extras turned on, I got 165 FPS. The GTX 970 was when I could jump into 1440p, and I kept the settings like our chart at medium with no extras, and here I still cranked out 177 FPS. The 1050 Ti followed, and with the same exact settings as the 970, I squeezed 
out a probably not accurate 203 FPS. Like I said, all of these maps are different, so I was probably playing on an easy to run map for this one. As for our last two NVIDIA cards in 1440p and medium settings, both the GTX 1060 3GB model and GTX 1650 scored honestly almost the exact same results. After that, I switched over to the RX 560, and here's when I realized that no further benchmarking was needed with dedicated GPUs. If the RX 560 can squeeze out 177 frames per second in 1440p medium, there's really no point in benchmarking a 570 or 580 like I normally do. So here's where things get a bit more fun. For our integrated graphics testing, first up was the Athlon 200GE. Remember, this is a dual core CPU, and although we did manage to get 67 FPS in 1080p and medium, to get the most FPS out of this one, I dropped the settings to 720p and low and got 75. With that test, you can see that changing both the settings and the resolution doesn't give a crazy difference. It, to be honest, this game just isn't that graphically demanding, and it's not even graphically impressive, so there's not a big difference between 720p and 1080p, except for like the text. After the 200GE, we used a bit beefier of an APU, the Ryzen 3 3200G. This one at least has four cores, and in 1080p, I dropped it down to low to get some higher FPS and actually squeezed out 118, but this was pretty much exactly what I got with medium settings, but our 1% and 0.1% numbers were a bit higher. And finally, for the true test of the day, the Intel i5-3570 finished up this benchmarking run and here we didn't get so great of results. In 720p and low, I still could only get 38 FPS. One thing to note is that when there's a lot of spells and effects going on, this drops to like 20 FPS, so this one I really wouldn't recommend playing with unless if you have a dedicated graphics card. The 3570 without a graphics card is the only thing on this table that cannot run Valorant very smoothly, so unless if your computer is a super potato without a dedicated graphics card, I think it's safe to say that you'll be able to run this game perfectly fine. Valorant is an incredibly easy to run game and it should only continue to be more optimized in the future as we get some more updates. Well that wraps up my benchmarks for the new Valorant game with some budget graphics cards and budget integrated graphics. As always drop a comment down below about what you're thinking of Valorant so far and how your system is currently running it. You might be able to help somebody out in the comment section. After that feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet. Definitely hit that subscribe button and make sure you're following me over on Twitch because we have a serious Forza group starting up here very soon.